catch me howling at the moon. What's up guys and welcome back to Park Pros. Last week we introduced a new series here on this channel, Coaster Madness, and you guys really seem to like this type of tournament style video, especially with the big three element thrown in there. You guys asked for more, so I'm here to deliver. Today we'll be kicking off the second edition of Coaster Madness, which is the Cedar Fair Big Three Coaster Tournament. For those of you wondering, part two of the Six Flags Tournament will be coming out within the next week or so, but I thought it'd be better to get the first videos out for each of the tournaments before we hit some of the insane matchups coming in part two. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss either of the part two videos coming out soon. If you haven't seen part one of the Six Flags Tournament yet, you guys should stop this video and go check that out beforehand to get a gist of how these tournaments work. But if you have seen that video, we'll give you guys a quick refresh on how this all works. Just like the NCAA tournament, we'll be putting the 11 operating Cedar Fair parks into a single elimination tournament. But instead of picking winners of the matchups based on the overall parks, we take the three best coasters at each park, or their big three, and put them up against each other. We'll introduce each park's big three in their first matchup of the tournament. Let's take a look at the bracket. The parks are each seeded based on their annual attendance numbers. As you can see, the top five seeds each get first round buys. Knott's Berry Farm is the top seed in the Kinzel region, benefiting from having year-round operations that gives them the highest annual attendance numbers in the chain. The other challengers in the Kinzel region are California's Great America, Valley Fair, Kings Island, and Carowinds. The top seed in the We Met region is Canada's Wonderland, which is the most visited seasonal park in the Cedar Fair chain. The other parks in the We Met region are Dorney Park, Worlds of Fun, Cedar Point, King's Dominion, and Michigan's Adventure. Just a reminder that we're not using new for 2020 coasters in the Big Threes, and that these Big Threes are formulated and decided using a blend of my own personal opinions and what the consensus of the overall coaster community is. Without further delay, let's jump right into these first round matchups. With Knott's receiving a first round bye for being the most attended Cedar Fair Park, we'll hop right into our first matchup between the Big Threes of 8 seed California's Great America and 9 seed Valley Fair. The big three out of Northern California is Railblazer, an RMC single rail, Gold Striker, a GCI wooden coaster, and Flight Deck, a B&M Envert. They're up against the trio from Minneapolis, which includes Renegade, a GCI Woody, Wild Thing, a Morgan Hyper coaster, and Steel Venom, an Intamin Impulse coaster. Let's break down this matchup. Great America has a really well-rounded big three on paper. Headlining their lineup is Railblazer, an amazingly intense and fast-paced single rail coaster with great theming and a fitting name. Then we have Gold Striker, which is considered one of the better GCIs out there. Rounding out their lineup is an intense B&M invert, Flight Deck, which I hear has a great layout and strong positive Gs. Valley Fair's big three is headlined by Renegade, another strong GCI that has a great compact layout and a really unique S-curve drop. The rest of their lineup is rounded out by Wild Thing, which is one of the weaker Morgan Hyper coasters out there, and Steel Venom, one of the few Intamin Impulse coasters that still utilizes a holding break. Renegade is a top 10 wooden coaster for me, but unfortunately on the other side of this matchup is another GCI that's considered as good, if not better, in Gold Striker. Valley Fairs 2 and 3 don't really excite me that much. Wild Thing is a snooze fest, and Steel Venom is good, but not the same caliber of coaster as Railblazer or even Flight Deck. And the winner of this matchup moving on to take on the one seed knots in the elite eight is the eight seed california's great america their big three is very well rounded and their two standouts of railblazer and gold striker push them comfortably ahead of valley fair moving right on to our next first round matchup we head over to the we met side of the bracket for a matchup between the big threes of seven seed dorney park and ten seed worlds of fun the big three out of allentown pennsylvania consists of Steel Force, a Morgan Hypercoaster, Talon, a B&M Invert, and Hydra the Revenge, a B&M Floorless Coaster. The trio out of Kansas City has a big three lineup of Prowler, a GCI Wooden Coaster, Mamba, a Morgan Hypercoaster, and Patriot, a B&M Invert. Let's take a look at these lineups. For Dorney, Steel Force is another one of these Morgan Hypercoasters, and if I'm being honest, these coasters don't really do a whole lot for me. 
They have a lot of weak floater air time, and the good speed you pick up on the 200 plus foot drops are minimized by the long, drawn out elements. Then Dorney has two smaller scaled B&Ms, Talon and Invert, and Hydra, which has that famous JoJo roll at the beginning, and is a ride I've always thought looks like one of the better B&M floorless coasters out there. For Worlds of Fun, their lineup is headlined by Prowler, which I think is a very underrated GCI. It's got a great layout with some good ejector moments. I love the way it goes out and back into the woods, and pitch black night rides on this aggressive little wooden coaster are phenomenal. Then you have Mamba, another Morgan Hyper that I'm indifferent about, and Patriot, a B&M invert that has a really good layout but lacks intensity. The matchup between these two parks has two shared models from the same manufacturers that both look like they're around the same caliber as each other, with Steel Force and Mamba, and Patriot and Talon. And while I think the Morgans cancel each other out, Talon looks a little bit better than Patriot to me, but not by a significant margin. That essentially leaves us between Prowler and Hydra, a personal favorite coaster of mine and one that's been on my bucket list for nearly a decade. This is probably the most even park matchup we've had in either of these tournaments so far, and it all comes down to Hydra versus Prowler. And the winner moving on to face Canada's Wonderland in the Elite 8 is the 10 seed, Worlds of Fun. They were able to pull off this upset on the back of Prowler, which really is a phenomenal coaster. And while I do think Hydra looks fantastic, I'll take a great GCI over a good B&M any day of the week. Moving on to our final matchup of the first round, we have 6 seed King's Dominion taking on the 11 seed Michigan's Adventure. The 6 seed out of Virginia has a big 3 of Intimidator 305, an Intamin Giga Coaster, Twisted Timbers, an RMC Hybrid, and Dominator, a B&M Floorless Coaster. They're up against the 11 seed out of Michigan's big 3 of Shivering Timbers, a CCI Wooden Coaster, Wolverine Wildcat, a Din Wooden Coaster, and Corkscrew, an Aero Looper. Our last matchup may have been the closest we've ever had, but this one looks like it could be the biggest blowout we've ever had. But regardless, let's go over these lineups. For King's Dominion, you have two elite coasters in the top two, with Intimidator 305 being considered one of the best steel coasters in the world to a lot of people, and Twisted Timbers, while smaller in scale, is often listed among the top RMC hybrids out there. Then in the three spot, you have Dominator, a coaster that many consider to be one of the best, if not the best, B&M floorless coaster out there. All around, this is just a solid lineup and a true contender to go all the way in this tournament in my eyes. For Michigan's Adventure, you have the headliner in Shivering Timbers, which looks like one of the best CCI wooden coasters out there. The out and back layout consisting of hardly anything else besides hills is an airtime lover's dream. It's high on my bucket list of coasters that I want to get to in 2020, as it's only a few hours away from where I live. Then you have Wolverine Wildcat, an old wooden coaster that seems to get mixed reviews in the community, and Corkscrew, an aero looper that's just about as basic as they come. There was no matchup that Michigan's Adventure was going to win in this tournament, but it's unfortunate for them that they run into a King's Dominion lineup in this first round that just completely annihilates them. And the winner moving on to face 3 seed Cedar Point in the Elite 8 is... King's Dominion. This lineup is just stacked, and while Shivering Timbers may be on par with Dominator as a coaster, I-305 and Twisted Timbers is just a ridiculous top 2. And that concludes our first round. Our Elite 8 matchups are set, and as you can see we have some really good matchups coming up in this second round. Let's jump right into these matchups and meet the big 3s of some of these higher attended Cedar Fair parks. Starting off in the Kinzel region, we have the one seed Knott's Berry Farm stepping up to the tournament arena after their first round bye. They'll be taking on eight seed California's Great America after their big first round victory over Valley Fair. The one seed out of Buena Park, California boasts a big three lineup of Ghost Rider, a CCI turned GCI wooden coaster, Accelerator, an intimate accelerator coaster, and Hangtime, a Gerslar Infinity coaster. They're up against a Great America lineup hungry for an upset, which includes Railblazer, Gold Striker, and Flight Deck. Let's dive right into this matchup I'm touting as the Battle for California. For Knots, you have an absolutely amazing CCI coaster, recently redone by GCI and Ghost Rider, which is a top 5 wooden coaster for me. Then you have Accelerator, an iconic Intamin launch coaster that's super intense but a little short, and Hangtime, a new Gerslauer coaster that has a great layout, is butter smooth, and gives off a ton of the sensation it's named after. 
That right there is a super solid top three. You've got the standout coaster in Ghost Rider, and two really good, really unique supporting rides. On the other side of the matchup, you have another really good GCI wooden coaster in Gold Striker, a kick-ass RMC in Real Blazer, and a great B&M invert in Flight Deck. This matchup has two top-tier GCIs going up against each other in Ghost Rider and Gold Striker, and by comparison, these two are really close. I think that Ghost Rider is a little bit better of a coaster though, and I think most people would agree. Here's where deciding a winner gets tricky. I think Real Blazer is better than both Accelerator and Hang Time, but I think both Accelerator and Hang Time are better than Flight Deck. Both of these big threes are so well-rounded and offer unique experiences, and the difference between these two is so razor thin, but I think I've come to my conclusion. The winner of this Elite 8 matchup and the first park advancing to the Final Four is... The one seed, Knott's Berry Farm. Great America was so, so close to pulling off this massive upset, but there's a few reasons it fell just short. First off, Ghost Rider is an absolutely elite coaster. And while there's many people out there that also put Railblazer into that category, I'm not as high on the single rails as a lot of people are. The second reason is, for as much as Flight Deck looks like a kick-ass invert, you can find similar experiences all over the country. Knott's has two very unique rides in Accelerator and Hang Time, and they're not just unique, but they're also really great coasters and incredibly re-rideable. The diversity of Knott's big three gives them the edge in this one, although they barely squeaked out their spot in the final four. Are we having fun yet? I told you guys these matchups were good. On to our next matchup of the Elite Eight in the Kinzel region, we have the debut of 4 seed Kings Island and 5 seed Carowinds. Let's meet the lineups of these two juggernauts. The 4 seed out of Cincinnati boasts a big 3 lineup of Diamondback, a B&M Hyper, Mystic Timbers, a GCI Wooden Coaster, and Banshee, a B&M Invert. The 5 seed out of Charlotte has a big 3 lineup of Fury 325, a B&M Giga, Afterburn, a B&M Invert, and Copperhead Strike, a mock multi-launch coaster. Let's break down this really good 4-5 matchup. For Kings Island, you have Diamondback, one of the new generation B&M hypers that I'm actually a really big fan of. Then it's Mystic Timbers, a great out-and-back GCI wooden coaster, and Banshee, the longest B&M invert in the world that has some mixed reviews because of its restraints and intensity, but is, for the most part, very liked. For Carowinds, you have one of the best steel coasters in the entire world in Fury 325, which is probably a top 3 coaster in this entire tournament. Then you have Afterburn, a top tier B&M invert, and Copperhead Strike, the new for 2018 mock multi-launch coaster, which I will say definitely gives Carowinds points for adding some uniqueness to their lineup. And I've heard that just like Time Traveler, Copperhead Strike is a really fun, completely re-rideable coaster. If there's anything I've learned from this tournament, it's that Cedar Fair has so many good B&Ms and GCIs. When you compare these two lineups, there's obviously one coaster that stands above the rest, both literally and figuratively. Of course, we're talking about Fury here, and it's clearly a much better coaster than its little brother Diamondback. Then if we look at the other two matchups, I think the two B&M inverts essentially cancel themselves out. So this one really comes down to the matchup between Mystic Timbers and Copperhead Strike. Now obviously, Mystic Timbers is a better coaster than Copperhead, but the question is, how much better? Is the distance between Mystic and Copperhead enough to overcome the distance between Fury and Diamondback? And the park advancing to the final four to take on one seed, Knott's, is... the five seed, Carowinds. Kings Island has such a solid big three, but in the end, Mystic Timbers couldn't overcome the gap that Fury 325 created. Fury is such an elite coaster, and the big investment that Cedar Fair has put into Carowinds over the past five years really carried them here. If we were to revisit this matchup next year with Kings Island getting their Giga to match up with Fury, I think there's a good chance this would have been a different outcome. But for now, Fury is just too much for Kings Island to overtake, and Carowinds earns a spot in the Final Four. On to our first Elite Eight matchup in the We Met region, we see the debut of two seed Canada's Wonderland against our Cinderella story of the first round, 10 seed Worlds of Fun. The second seeded trio out of Toronto has a lineup of Leviathan, a B&M Giga Coaster, Behemoth, a B&M Hyper Coaster, and Yukon Striker, a B&M Dive Coaster. They're up against Worlds of Fun with the trio of Prowler, 
Mamba, and Patriot. Let's dig into this matchup. Canada's Wonderland has maybe the best lineup of B&M coasters in the entire world. While Leviathan is considered to be one of the weaker Gigas in the world, it's still a Giga. And then you have Behemoth, which many label as the best B&M hypercoaster in North America. Finally, Yukon Striker. And while I'm not huge on B&M dive coasters, this custom layout looks like a massive improvement. I'm glad Worlds of Fun got their moment in round one, but not even my irrational love for Prowler is going to get them past the strong Canadian B&M trio. While I'd probably take Prowler over Yukon Striker, I don't think it squares up to Leviathan or Behemoth, and God knows that Mamba or Patriot doesn't even come close to any of these Canadian coasters. And the first park advancing to the final four in the Wiimat region is the two seed, Canada's Wonderland. Leviathan and Behemoth are such a formidable duo, and Yukon is a unique coaster in the third slot. Worlds of Fun surprised us by winning round one as a 10 seed, but ultimately their lineup wasn't strong enough to get past Wonderland. For our final Elite Eight matchup, we have what is my personally most anticipated matchup so far in this entire tournament. I think both 3 seed Cedar Point and 6 seed Kings Dominion have good enough lineups to take this whole thing. And honestly this matchup is so good, I think it's final 4 or even championship game quality. But as you may have noticed, the time in this video is almost out, which means you all are going to have to wait until part 2 of this video to see these two juggernauts face off. So as always, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel with notifications on. And make sure to go follow us on Instagram so you can be the first people to know when our new videos drop. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you haven't already and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to see what your guys' predictions are on how the rest of this tournament's going to play out. Thank you all for checking out the video and we'll see you soon for part two.